we don't clean them. We, we, no, I'm talking about the people. Welcome everyone to another summer service at the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Jill Thomas and I am chair of the worship committee. Our minister, Reverend Jennifer Innes, has the majority of the summer off, lucky girl. And our services then are presented by members and friends of the congregation. Our service this week is presented by Bill Ordaz. And it is about the little prince and how it ties to our UU values. Next week, our service is presented by Dr. Mike Jongarius. He's a family practice physician who, after 30 years plus, uh, watched his parents age with him, and he developed a special interest in Alzheimer's and other dementia. Mike first offered to do this service last summer, but all the slots were filled. It's kind of a bit of serendipity that we've got him scheduled now, when it's such a topic in the news. We provide multiple ways to watch our service. It's always nice to see a sanctuary full of nice faces. But if you can't make it on Sunday, you can watch us on Facebook, or you can watch us later in the week on YouTube. No matter what the medium is, you are welcome to join us. Everyone is welcome here, regardless of race, ethnic background, gender, socioeconomic status, or politics. We value diversity. When the weather is comfortable, I invite you to take a hike in our great grove. There are several trees back there that appear to be dead. But if you take a moment and pay close attention, you will see that they are teeming with life. They have become a home and shelter from a multitude of birds and bugs. They feed all kinds of critters. It's a living example of the circle of life and a spiritual lesson right in the middle of our great growth. We cherish the land our church occupies. As current caretakers of the land, we are working to restore portions of it to its native state. We recognize that this was once the ancestral land of the Peoria people. They were here long before the first Europeans came down the river. We celebrate them for who they were and who they are today. Now would be a good time to turn your devices to worship mode, otherwise known as silent. We've even got a slide to help you. 
We have a number of things that will help make your worship with us more comfortable. There are hearing assist devices. There's a child safe area where your children can play quietly on the rug. There are fidgets in the baskets if you need them. If there's anything we can do to make you more comfortable, be sure and let our ushers know. Please wear a name tag so we can get to know each other. After the service, there are coffee and refreshments in the fellowship hall. It's a good time to get to know each other. If you are new to us, I guarantee you will find a warm welcome. There is a shortage of kitchen help this week, so if you are able, please help with the cleanup after coffee. Now, summer is a time we try new things. July 21st, we are trying an experiment called T-shirt theology. You are what you wear. To get started, we're asking you to lay your T-shirt flat and send in a picture. And then between eight or ten of those members will have a turn at the mic that Sunday. And they can tell us about their T-shirts and why they are meaningful. Now, I know how Unitarians can talk. So a time limit will be strictly in force. And fair warning, we have a gong. At this service, the congregation will get to know some of our members in a way they would not have otherwise. Newcomers will learn a little bit more about the UUs in this congregation, how they view the world. In the fellowship hall, we will string a clothesline to display additional shirts that members would like to bring and, and didn't get in by the deadline. The deadline had been the 17th of July, but I've moved that up so we've got more time to prepare the service. So please get your t-shirts in as soon as possible. During the summer, we also have one of our major fundraisers for the year. It's the annual rummage sale. Donations are needed of clean, functional items. We don't sell adult clothing, but shoes are okay. It takes a small army to run this sale, so please, contact Lindy Peterson or the office to sign up for volunteering. Lindy has been sharing this sale for a number of years, to which we're all very grateful. Sale dates are July 26th and 27th. The sale will run a little differently this year. Details are in the Friday flock note or in the July builder. There will be an optional volunteer training after church on uh, next Sunday, the 14th. Lindy says that anyone, rookie, volunteer, or somebody who's just curious, are all welcome to attend this. Now I'd like to ask Regina to come up and tell us about a new curriculum that's going to be offered. Good morning. I am Regina Stanley. I'm the membership coordinator um, here at um, UUCP. And Jesse Laughlin, um, our DLRE, and I are excited um, to introduce Faith Forward, which is a series of classes from visitor to leader. Um, it'll show us how to do church and be in community with one another. There's three paths, core, advanced, and leadership. Um, we're going to offer these on rotation throughout the year. So we are starting with, I will be um, leading the Inquirer series, and Jesse will be doing the Beyond Inquirers. So we'll start this month, July 14th. Jesse will do What Do You Use Believe? And July 21st, I will offer a campus uh, church tour and orientation. So just pay attention to the UU News on Friday or the Builder, and that will give you all the information for all the upcoming classes. Hope you can join us. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our organist for this morning. Many of you know Sherry, who's one of our uh, regular musicians. Well, today, filling in for her is one of her most promising students, Pax Carlisle. Please welcome Pax to our service today. Now let us enter into worship with our opening hymn, Come Sing a Song With Me.
I'd like to invite Bill to come up and give us our opening words. We gather in the spirit of exploration, guided by the wisdom found within the message of the little prince. This beloved message invites us to contemplate the importance of love, friendship, and the pursuit of truth in our lives. We invite Papa Tim Harold and grandson Isaac for the chalice lighting. Good morning. We light this chalice in the spirit of curiosity and wonder, inspired by the message of the little prince. May its flame illuminate our hearts as we embark on a journey of exploration and discovery, seeking deeper meaning and connection. If that's the worst thing that happens during this service, we've still had a really good day. Thank you. Each Sunday, we light our candles of care. I will light the first candles, and then you are welcome to come forward and light a candle of your own. A candle can be lit for whatever is on your heart.
This week, on Friday, the office will probably be closed. I haven't heard for sure, but um, our uh, office manager's father is having open heart surgery that day. And this is really weighing on her. There's a lot of stress involved. So please keep her in your thoughts and prayers as her father has open heart surgery on Friday. Within our wider world, I'm going to use my platform like a star. I have a friend who is a husband, a father, a grandfather. After years of a very successful career in IT, his liver is failing not due to alcoholism. He's in need of a transplant. The medical bills are mounting, plus there's extra expenses for travel and lodging so his wife and son can be near him. His wife has had to quit her job to care for him. To add to her strife, her father passed away this week. It's difficult for her to keep up with her mortgage and living expenses. He broke his hip the same day a liver was available. Now he has to hope for another liver to become available before he's too weak to accept it. I share this story for a couple of reasons. First, if you are so inclined, please become an organ donor. Just Google how to become an organ donor and the form pops right up for you. Second, we all know how broken our healthcare system is. I don't know how to fix this mess, but it needs to be fixed. Please pressure your elected officials to work on a solution and to make it a priority. May we now have a moment of silence to mark those things that are carried in our hearts but remain unspoken. I love looking at the table with all the candles. When a single candle is lit, the light shines very, very dimly. When many are lit, the light from them overlaps and shines with a strength that they would not have alone. May it be so that the love and care we share with one another in this community helps strengthen our lives and enrich it. Now is the time for their children and their helpers to exit our sanctuary and retire to our religious education wing. They will enjoy a combination of play and they'll be snuck in a little bit of learning. Now, The Little Prince is a book many of our youth will have read or will read in school and they are invited to stay for the reflection if you're interested in how the book reveals UU values. Can we sing our children out now? I'd like to invite Heather up to do our reading. Good morning. As we journey alongside the little prince, we witness his encounters with diverse characters in the universe and his reflections on life's complexities through his eyes we are reminded of the innocence and purity of childhood, where the heart sees clearly what the eyes cannot. We reflect on the value of imagination and the importance to cultivate a good and useful mindset. 
May we embody the spirit of the little prince, approaching each encounter with an open heart and a willingness to listen and learn. Let us embrace the lessons of empathy, kindness, and humility, nurturing the bonds that unite us and cherishing the beauty that surrounds us. Several years ago, our Sunday collection began a custom called Share the Plate. I thought we were unique, but I found this is a UU tradition around the country. It's a custom practiced um, where one half of the cash offering from our Sunday collection is donated each month to a not-for-profit organization. The charities selected are chosen because they reflect our UU values. This month, our Share the Plate recipient is the East Bluff Community Center Food Pantry. The pantry operates four Saturdays a month from 8.30 till noon. Guests select from a variety of food items and then receive a prepared bag along with a choice of meat and a dessert. Residents of this low-income area and a number of unhoused individuals are served. Breakfast is prepared by the Peoria Area Humanists and is served to the guests while they wait. Guests concurrently visit the pantry twice a month. The pantry receives no government funding and depends on donations of both product and funds. You may put cash or check in the plate or you can put a donation in your envelope that are in the pews and indicate if it's for a pledge to split with the charity and the church or if the contents should go entirely to the charity. Will the ushers please come forward and collect the offertory? It is my pleasure this morning to introduce Bill Ordaz. Bill is a leadership consultant and has his own consulting business. He retired from Caterpillar in 2002 after more than 30 years of service. He has lived in Mexico, Chile, Switzerland, and Spain, and currently lives in Peoria. Like the Little Prince, he has traveled to many countries, 51 of them to date. He has more than, he works in more than 42 countries. He speaks Portuguese, Spanish, and English, which he uses in his work to consult, coach, and develop people. Bill and his partner, Tim, have been members of the UU Church since 2020. As a church board member, his work travels mean he most often joins our meetings via Zoom. Invariably, it's asked, where are you this week, Bill? Bill was born in central Mexico and was raised and educated in Chillicothe. He has three adult children and is the grandfather to Isaac and three other boys. Please welcome Bill Ordaz.
Good morning, and thank you. How many of you have read the book, The Little Prince? Quite a few, quite a few, good. So you can keep me in check and uh, correct me, uh, enhance the message, if you would. The picture you see here is uh, with our grandson, uh, Marcus Oliver Ordaz Pirtle. Call him the Moop, his initials, M-O-O-P. With just a few weeks old, this picture was taken uh, 10 years ago. And uh, I, of course, had to indoctrinate him in the Little Prince. This uh, that you see here is called El Principito. It's the version in Spanish, and it's much too small for me to read. <laughs> so it was strictly for, for the picture reasons. But um, uh, Marcus and his brother Matthew live in Madison, Wisconsin, and they were here for a visit, and uh, I had to take advantage of it. This little book, by the way, sits on my bedroom dresser, and uh, it is a constant reminder for me to, uh, to live the child within me, to have the imagination, the innovation, the creativity that we all can benefit from. The Principito is, uh, is truly a book to consider, to behold. Uh, I've read it many times over the years. Uh, I think I first began reading this in in the mid 80s, I believe. And uh, it's written by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, a Frenchman who wrote the book in 1943. And as you see, it is a, a book about life, adults, and human nature. And since becoming a member of the UU, I took great interest to see parallels and links with our seven principles and with the message of the little prince. It was, it's quite fascinating uh, as you consider it. And uh, so I took the time to put a few things together here to compare the message of the little prince and how it aligns with our seven principles. Uh, Le Petit Prince, as it is uh, titled in French, it is a classic by this French author who wrote it in 19, uh, published it in 1943, and it's been translated in many, many languages. Uh, as I looked at uh, this up, I was really amazed to think that there's even 500 languages. That's a huge amount. Of course, it, there's dialects involved there, too. I don't know what the breakdown is, but a lot of languages. I personally have read it uh, a number of times in Spanish and in English, and I will say I'm the type of person that I find I have to read something multiple times. And I've read The Little Prince multiple times because I, I couldn't get it. I could not get the full message the first time. Uh, I don't know your experiences, you know, how, how clear the message was to you, but definitely it's a book that uh, you can reread and get a different perspective on the message each time you read it. And I think just what I just said, get a different perspective in itself is a message of the little prince, the importance that we all can benefit from getting different perspectives on our neighbors, on our, uh, our congregants, our, our friends, our family. Getting a different perspective can help people understand each other much, much better. So uh, another interesting fact that you see also is that it's the second most translated book after the Bible. And also quite, quite impressive to see uh, there's got to be something to the message of, of the little prince. So here's the storyline. And uh, there's a lot of words up here. And, and if you'll allow me, I, I'll just go through some of the uh, items here briefly. The story of the little prince includes the pilot the pilot of an airplane 
that crashed in the Sahara Desert. Uh, the pilot is also the narrator in the book. And the pilot uh, himself uh, is Saint Juan Exupéry, uh, is an individual who, as a young boy, drew a picture of a boa constrictor eating an elephant. He drew a picture of a boa constrictor eating an elephant. Imagination, okay? We've got to have a lot of imagination. He was proud of that drawing, and as he showed it to the adults, the adults would look at, at the picture and he'd say, what is it? And many would respond, it's a hat. It looks like a hat, a funny hat. And uh, the young boy would be frustrated because he knew what he drew and he couldn't understand why people couldn't see that it was a boa constrictor eating an elephant. And he was, in fact, scolded by some and told that he shouldn't be wasting his time on silly drawings and that he should do something that would be more practical. And so the young boy became frustrated and he gave up the potential to become an artist, a drawer, a, a, a sketch uh, artist. And so he became a pilot. He studied how to fly planes and became an aviator. So the pilot um, has this ability to see the essential, another key word in the book, to see the essential, the important things. The plane that uh, the pilot was flying uh, in the book crashes onto the desert, and, and because the, the plane had engine trouble, the engine in the plane, which could represent or does represent the heart of the plane, the engine, the heart, the pilot had engine trouble. The pilot had heart problem, problems, not, not, not medical problems, but relationship problems, problems of the heart. And he crashes onto the desert and he meets the little prince uh, the next day after he, he crashed. With regards to the little prince and a little bit about the little prince's background. The little prince, a young boy, lives on a small asteroid, and that is on the planet or the asteroid called B612. There actually is a B612 asteroid. It's a tiny asteroid, and the little prince is the sole occupant of that asteroid. On that asteroid, on that uh, planet, if you will, the planet B612, there is a rose, there are volcanoes, there are uh, baobabs, which are trees. Do anyone remember the baobabs? Are they good or bad? The baobabs are bad for the planet because they can grow. They have the potential to grow into very, very large trees. And for the small size of the planet, those roots can actually cause damage and destroy the planet. So one of the things that the little prince had to do is to uproot. He had to pick out the, the seedlings, the small baobabs, as they were growing out of the ground. And this also has a symbolism with regards to personal responsibility, to the challenges that we have day in and day out, and the need to maintain our world, to care for our world so that it's not destroyed. Thinking about also that these baobabs on the planet and the period of time when this story was written, uh, what was going on between 1939 and 1945, World War II. And this, many people believe the baobabs were a symbol of the growing Nazism. 
and how Nazism was taking root and potentially breaking up the world. So the Baobabs uh, represented uh, a daily challenge, and it was part of the little prince's routine to uproot these. Uh, with regards to the rose, the little prince had a unique rose. It was the only rose on B612, and the prince was in love with it. The prince loved it. He loved the fragrance. He loved the looks and the rose uh, and the relationship between the rose and the little prince was more of a one-way relationship. The prince loved the rose. The rose did not express any love or affection for the prince. And this actually frustrated the little prince to the point where he decides to leave B612, go on, move on, and see other places. And the rose, which was a very vain and uh, self-concentrated uh, uh, rose, it, 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 it realized what was happening and finally expressed to the little prince, I'm sorry, I love you. I'm sorry that I've never told you before. And so finally, you see there the expression of the rose's affection and love for the little prince. But it was late in the game because the little prince decided already that he was about to embark on a journey. We'll talk more about that. The little prince then leaves home. He leaves the planet B612. And he goes to visit six planets, six other asteroids, where there are individuals on each of those planets. They're small asteroids. And each of these individuals, each of these characters, you'll see in the little book, are all individuals that themselves are trapped in their own emotional isolation. The individuals that the little prince came across are the king who was obsessed with power. The power of being the king, and they're again trapped in their own emotional isolation. After visiting the king on that asteroid, the little prince moves on to the next asteroid and visits the vain man, the vain man, a narcissist who thinks that everyone cares about him and everyone is looking at, at him. And uh, does that sound familiar? King, narcissist. But the vain man thinks that everything is all about himself. The little prince goes on to the third planet and visits a drunkard, a drunkard on the third asteroid. And the drunkard uh, is drinking basically so that he can forget about why he's drinking. And there again, it's just caught in a vicious cycle of his own emotional isolation. The next planet, the, the little prince visits the businessman. And the businessman is completely obsessed with numbers and materialistic things. And he's too busy to be bothered and to dialogue with the little prince. Uh, again, completely obsessed with data and, and buying stars. He says he's able to buy stars. He's, he wants to buy all the stars just so he can have the stars in the universe. Then there's the lamplighter, the lamplighter on another asteroid. And the lamplighter is, is someone who the little prince actually has some admiration for because the lamplighter was li lighting the lamps on, the, on his uh, asteroid and actually doing something outside of himself. He wasn't so self-centered, but he just was doing things in a repetitive man manner, lighting lamps, putting the lamps out, lighting lamps, putting the lamps out, again, because the asteroid, the planet, was so small. The last character 
that the little prince visited before going to Earth was the geographer. The geographer is a very theoretical person. He knew all about geography. He knew all about the characteristics, where landmarks were and everything, but he never visited them himself. And uh, that was rather, there again, a representation of his own emotional isolation of how he, the, theoretical he was and, and, and not practical. The geographer, although, did encourage the little prince to visit Earth. And so that's what the little prince did. He went to Earth. And when he came to Earth, he landed in the desert. He landed in the Sahara Desert. And in the desert, he met a snake shortly after his arrival. The snake knew that the little prince was not from Earth, and the snake told the little prince, I can help you get back home, assuming that the little prince really isn't of Earth and didn't want to stay for too long a time. But the snake said, I can help you get back to your planet. Besides the snake, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later, there was a railroad switchman, and there was a sales clerk. And uh, they have their own stories, too, uh, of, of the people and, and uh, events of the little prince when he came to Earth. Also, there is uh, another important area, which is the garden, the, the garden that's full of roses. And when the little prince, by the way, the little prince was on Earth for about a year he's going around and seeing all these things. But in the garden, there are many roses. And when the prince actually came upon those roses, he became very sad. And he even cried because as he saw all these beautiful roses, he said, I thought I had the only rose. I thought I was the only one with the rose. But look here, it's a garden full of roses. And, and a very sad and contemplative, and all of a sudden, a fox. He sees a fox under an apple tree, the apple tree which symbolizes completeness, the wise fox. And the fox uh, is, is there watching the little prince, and the little prince, feeling sad and lonely, says, I, I want a friend. Can you be my friend? And the fox says, you have to tame me first. You have to domesticate me. Here's where I had some problem with some of the translation, because tame me, domesticate me, meaning you have to bond with me. You have to connect with me. And think of the message that this represents to all of us, to us in our everyday lives, how we have we really uh, have the need and benefit of connecting, of bonding with people. And if you don't, might it be that your life is less rich for it? Because connecting and bonding enriches our life. So the, the little prince realizes that he has to connect. He has to bond with the fox. And, and, but he's still sad. And the fox then says those words, solo se puede ver con el corazón lo esencial es invisible a los ojos. It is only with the heart that one can truly see the essential is invisible to the eyes. And the fox told the little prince, he said, you spent so much time with your rose you nurtured it, you watered it, you talked to it, you bonded with it, you connected with it. Sad that the rose didn't reciprocate, but the prince invested all that time in the rose that it, it became very dear to, to him. The rose did, remember, before the prince left, the rose did say, I'm sorry, I love you. I'm sorry I never said it before. And think of that 
how that in our day-to-day -day relations might also apply. People that don't express, people that hold back for whatever reason, that don't say what's in their heart, what's on their minds, that cause people to go away, to emotionally isolate in whatever way that might manifest. So it is only with the heart that one can truly see the essential is invisible to the eyes. Think of that also in our day-to-day -day practical world. Have you heard of people that have insight? Insight? That's a special term. And in my work, even in Portuguese and Spanish, there is no translation for insight. We use the term insight, insight. <laughs> insight is the ability of an individual to see beyond the obvious, to sense, to intuit what's going on. These are special, special meanings. These are special skills, special powers that some people have, the ability to have insight. Going on to the timeline then, uh, the interaction takes place <clears throat> after the fox and the prince dialogue and interact, and after the fox, after the, the prince realizes that his rose is truly unique, unique to him because he dedicated so much time. And here we have the message of values, what we dedicate our time to. That which you dedicate your time to represents a value in your life. What are your values? So the prince realizes that the rose is indeed unique, even beyond all the roses that he saw in the garden. And the prince wants to go back. The prince wants to go back to B612, to be with his rose. And so, at that point, then, is when the pilot crashes in the desert, interacts with the little prince, and actually only eight days transpire between the time that the pilot meets the little prince and they realize that, hey, they're out there in the desert, they need water, they need to drink. And uh, the pilot eventually is uh, told by the little prince that uh, he does want to go back to visit to, to be with his rose. And so the return to planet to the B612 uh, takes place because then here again, the snake appears, the snake appears uh, and, and uh, the little prince says, I'm ready to go back. I'm ready to go back to my rose, to my planet B612. And the snake, the venomous snake bites the little prince the pilot from a distance sees that this happens. The prince falls to the ground. And the next day, the little prince's body is gone. And the pilot realizes that, yes, the little prince has returned to the planet B612. A summary of a lot of things that happen in this book, things that are not easy, a lot of symbolism. The story itself is called an allegory. And you know, an allegory is a story that has hidden meaning. And I believe that's probably a good reason why you read it once, you read it again, you read it another time. Because each time you might be reading it with a different, a slightly different perspective. And it can be really, really useful in making parallels and connections with our daily lives. My takeaways involve these symbols that you see here, just some samples. Remember the king who's obsessed with power, the vain man who thinks it's all about him, the asteroids, the individual characters that are all trapped in their own emotional isolation. Remember, there's six asteroids, six characters trapped in their own isolation. There is the boa 
Can you see the boa that has the elephant that ate the elephant? Okay. Why can't you see the elephant? You know, again, imagination is one of the messages here. Imagination. You see the rose. I might have not mentioned the volcanoes that were on the ass road. There were three volcanoes on B612. And part of the uh, symbolism for the three volcanoes on the little prince's uh, asteroid are that he regularly had to tend to these volcanoes. They're small volcanoes. Everything was small. So he had to rake the volcanoes out. Two were active. One was extinct. But those two active ones, he had to rake to make sure that they, that there was, uh, that they were clear, that they, there were no obstructions because they wouldn't, he didn't want to uh, cause anything to destroy the planet. That sends a message of personal responsibility, how important it is for us to tend to our daily lives, to our daily challenges. The Baobab, remember the Baobab is a, an unwanted seedling that grows to a very large tree that can rip apart the planet, the symbolism to Nazism back in, the, in, in, in that era. The airplane, the airplane that had engine problem, the engine representing the heart, relationship challenges. So my takeaways with this story, and I, I, put, a, uh, I put these in terms of, uh, Four categories. The message that I take away from this is to have imagination. You got to have imagination to read this book. It's kind of silly because it seems to be a child's book, but there's really, really some deep meanings here. Have imagination, make connections, bond, have relationships, interact, be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be open up yourself to people if you're truly to connect, if you want to truly connect and bond. Take personal responsibility, like raking the active volcanoes so that they don't blow up our day-to-day -day personal responsibility. The desire, the, the need to constantly grow and give your time. Volunteer, usher, help in fellowship hall, be on the board, be on a committee, help with things that will help our community grow. We asked the question, you could ask the question, how are the, uh, how is imagination linked? To the seven principles. And you can see here the term empathy, open-mindedness, accepting diverse perspectives, and thinking beyond the conventional. Empathy, huge term. What does empathy mean, someone? Yes, Dave. Yes, you can feel what someone else is feeling. Yes. You imagine yourself in their shoes. And that is powerful. And I will tell you, as in day-to-day -day life, we want to establish trust. 50% of establishing trust with a, with a person is demonstrating empathy. And the action verb here is demonstrate empathy. Show empathy. Show me you're listening. Show me you're trying to understand me. Show me that you care. Demonstrate empathy. It is powerful and it works. Believe me, it works. I've seen it in action all around the world. It is powerful and you can't fake it. You cannot fake that you're trying to understand someone. You cannot fake that you're trying to listen to someone. You can maybe for a while, 
But sooner or later, you'll be found out. People can sense that, no? You, you into it. You can sense when somebody's being also fake. So empathy is, is huge. The making connections, honoring the unique value of individuals. And there again, you see empathy, acceptance, providing support which is a great reason to be part of UU here because we as a community provide support to others or we should provide support. We should be able to be there when people need to lean on each other. Personal responsibility, treating others with respect, being responsible, responsible for our actions, able to respond being responsible, and ensuring that we contribute positively to others' sense of dignity and self-worth. How we contribute to others' dignity and self-worth by giving them a sympathetic ear, by listening to them, by interacting with others, by bonding, by connecting, and then giving your time Giving time to listen. Is listening a skill? Listening in my work and leadership around the world, listening is the most difficult skill to master. What I say? <laughs> listening is the most difficult skill to master. And you know this. Relationships break up. Businesses break up. So much, so many things break up because people do not listen. We misunderstand, we misperceive. So giving time to social justice causes. When I see that social justice causes, I think of Joyce Harant and her endless, tireless efforts that Joyce and all the others that help her in, in those committees and so many different initiatives and efforts here at the church that contribute to social justice, but dedicating time also for personal reflection and study. And that's important, dedicating time for personal reflection and study. There has to be a time when you just, Reverend Jim just like, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. One of the best things I've found is the, the Fitbit relax mode that you can vibrate to help control your breathing two minutes or five minutes. And it's good time to just kind of reflect, calm down. People need this because this goes back to the little prince and, and, and how the businessmen just all about activity. Go, 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 go. No time to stop. So personal reflection study, also very, very important. How the teachings of the little prince compare to the seven UU values. I wrote a few things here that I would like to use as a conclusion. The first principle, as you know, is the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Our belief that every person is important. The little prince teaches us to value each other regardless of backgrounds or differences. This is seen in his interactions with the fox and the pilot, where he shows compassion and respect for their unique perspectives. The second principle, justice, equity, and compassion. We believe that all people should be treated fairly and kindly. The little prince encounters characters, the characters on the six asteroids who are obsessed with power, control, and materialism. However, he shows us that justice is not just about domination. Rather, it's about caring for others and seeking common ground. Seeking common ground. 
if we interact, if we dialogue with each other, we do find things that are common with each other. And that in itself helps to create bonds, helps to connect. The third principle, accepting one another and encouraging spiritual growth. We believe that we should accept one another and keep on learning together. Accept one another and keep on learning together. No matter how or what your age is, we can keep learning. The little prince encourages us to seek out the inner child within us. Seek out the inner child within us. A kid's book, it's about imagination, but it has some Real serious undertones here. Embrace the power of imagination. Grow in our understanding. The little prince reminds us never to stop learning and to always remain curious. The fourth principle is free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We believe that each person must be free to search for what is true and right in life. Even if we don't really buy in on what they, we believe is free, true and right in life. The little prince encourages us to look beyond the surface of things and seek the true nature of the world. Look beyond the surface of things. Remember what I said about insight? Those who have insight, the ability to see beyond the obvious, really have the skill. You can develop it. He reminds us that truth is not always obvious and that we must be willing to look deeper to find it. (laughs) The fifth principle is the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process. We, you use, believe that all People should have a voice. The little prince teaches us the importance of listening to others and seeking common ground. He reminds us that everyone has a voice. Everyone has needs and expectations and that we must work together to find solutions that benefit everyone. And one of the big challenges is discovering what people's needs and expectations are. If we don't express them, who's to know? We have to be able to express them. The rose didn't express the love for the little prince until it was too late. And the little prince left the asteroid. So for those who, are, who tend to be more of an indirect communication style, we really need to think about Say it, express it, tell us what you need, tell us what you expect. In our UU community, we we need to know so that we can help you, so that we can be with you, so that we can comfort you and just go arm, arm in arm going forward. The sixth principle, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice, we believe in working for a peaceful, fair, and free world. The little prince shows us that we are all connected and that our actions have a ripple effect, a ripple effect, the butterfly effect. Have you guys heard of the butterfly effect? A ripple effect on everyone around us. He encourages us to work towards a world where all people are valued. The seventh principle is respect for the interdependent web of all existence. We believe in caring for the earth, pulling up those baobabs. For the home we share with all living things, the little prince reminds us of the interconnectedness of all life, that we must care for our world, that our actions have consequences, and that we must act responsibly. May we take these lessons to heart as we go out, and may we always seek to live these principles in our daily lives. There's where I made connections with our seven principles. 
a reminder of my takeaways. And please think of it as a, a charge that you have from this beautiful, beautiful book to have imagination, to bond with each other, to take personal responsibility, and to give your time. That's my message from The Little Prince and how it relates to our UU principles. Thank you. Now will you stand as you are willing and able and join in our closing hymn when you're when our heart is in an holy place. <clears throat> As we extinguish, extinguish this chalice, may its light continue to shine brightly within us, illuminating our paths and comforting our souls. Let us carry forth the lessons of love, compassion, and wonder from the little prince, spreading its light wherever we go. Little Prince, guide us in our spiritual journey to make new discoveries and gain new insights, reminding us to see with our hearts, to cherish the connections we share, and to nurture the beauty that surrounds us. May love and kindness be our constant companions. Amen. <laughs>